Hey YouTube, I am back. Welcome to my studio. I'm Robin McClendon and mixed media artist. Of course, most of you know me for the gel plate and book arts. And uh, so today, I thought it'd be fun to continue with the file folder book structures because I this time of year is when I do a lot of organizing and cleaning up and trying to uh, just work through all the stuff I've made for the year. You, if you all think you make a lot, can you imagine when I make it as a content creator? Like I have more stuff than I could actually turn into art. Um, and, but when I look at it, all of it, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be good for this project. Oh, you know, and I can't, I like such a hard time getting rid of it. Oh my goodness. But what I'm doing is I like to make what I call studio cleanup journals. Um, and those of you who've been around for a while know that that's a big thing for me. And so this year I thought, but I'm also, but I'm also going to be making a journal that will hold my ephemera on my working table. So I have this idea because generally I'm always trying to put it in these, um, you know, these type of plastic folders. And I do like these. I really do like these. Uh, for a lot of my paper, my source documents and stuff like that, this is a good place to put them. But I have a lot of little pieces of stuff in here, like just bits and pieces of stuff that I used and I just stuck it back in here and I'm not gonna remember this stuff is in here. So I thought what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these journals with using the, um, the file folders that we can take and just keep them right on our desk and we're gonna use um, a saddle stitch, which is actually using a stapler and then that way, when you open it up and you see a piece of ephemera that you like, let's say I open it up and I see this, I can literally just tear it out. It's designed to tear out the book. Now, you, of course, you can make full-on books with these or full-on journals, but I'm going to use this as a way to kind of organize all of my stuff and then be able just to kind of sit through and flip through and see pieces I want. And um, because I'm going to be using staplers, I can unstaple it or I can just rip it out if I want different pieces for collage. I can also staple it back in. I can reuse this folio when I've finished everything. So I had this, this brainstorm because I've seen um, some of the creators who do a lot of the junk journaling and stuff like that. I like to follow Roxy Creation. You guys know I like her stuff because I love her Italian papers. I've told you about her before. I know many of you have bought her stuff um, and already know of her before I even mentioned it. But um, she made these little uh, books. She used old books and she turned them into the, and she put these little clear pouches in them and she puts all of her flowers and birds, or her flora and fauna, um, printable cut-ups in there and just alt labels and things like that and I think it's a brilliant idea. I don't use those types of things so I could never figure out how to apply it to me but I love the idea. Well I came up with a way to apply it. So those of you who are kind of do the work I do and have a lot of that kind of stuff laying around you might like this idea. So anyhow I've already been doing some printing with the patrons we got started. So I'm going to show you how I made these. Um, so this is kind of old wall with um, some of the bronze and stuff on there. This one is black with the gold inside. It's a bronzy gold. Oh, it's so good. And this one is black with some gold inside, some over stamping. So we're going to work, I'm going to show you how to do these and then, I'm you know, how to, how to print this and then I'm going to show you my idea for this journal. I think you guys are going to like it. So my plate is already nice and ready to go. So those of you who took Art Mythos, I mean not Art Mythos, the Art, Art Mythos Summit, you know one of the things that I introduced in my segment was working with Play-Doh as a way to transfer images on to the plate. So you may have seen this before. Um, it's an old, you know, kind of printmaking, monoprinting um, 
technique that we did years ago, like in grade school, you know, especially as art teachers with grade school and, you know, students and stuff like that. It's just a great way to pick up marks and then transfer them, not to the jail plea. We transferred them to, um, you know, onto the paper as stamps. But we're going to use this on the gel plate. So for those of you who have seen it, you're already ahead of the, gr the crowd and you've been doing this. And then for those of you who haven't, I'm just going to do um, a quick show of it. Um, there's so many ways you can work with this. It works with all different paints from acrylic to block printing to inks. Um, there's so many ways to use this thing as a stamp, as a, a release. But we're going to just use it as a release right now. So I have this really yummy wood block that I got. I oh, just love this thing. Those of you who have wood blocks, get them out. And if you don't, you can use you can use foam stamps like my foamies. You can use those. You can use um, anything, fabric, anything that takes a print. I know to press. I can press hard in this because this this is releasing you may just check your surface before you press too hard in it um, because it may stick um, you might just have to take a lighter print of that same thing if it's something that you don't mind you can put a little cooking spray on it just to get it a little bit more um, oily before you and then kind of you know clean it off clean your stamp off a little bit or wipe it off but maybe your first few prints might have a little oil on it. But after that, that normally will help to um, season whatever you want to print with. And then it'll print. Okay, so this is made a beautiful... Oh, look at that. Such a beautiful mold. And uh, so I'm going to show you how to do this. Using my ARA in the black. I've already stained my... Um, I've already stained my file folders because I'm on a mission. I'm doing a lot of different ways. This is just one of the techniques I'm going to do. You saw how we did the Basquiat last week, so you can do that style or any style gel printing for that matter. But So I have the large file folder, and I'm using my large plate because it is perfect. It's the perfect amount of um, space to take that whole full file, file folder. And so what I like about that too is that you know I can print all one side and then print the other side. So it goes a little faster. Because um, I'm really going to make a lot of these. Some of these I'm using to organize my stuff. The other ones I'm using for what I call my cleanup journals. And um, I'll be selling them on my um, on my website in January, and they'll be full of a lot of ephemera and paper and prints and uh, stains, whatever, everything I have that I'm just not going to be able to get to because I'll start making new stuff. So I'll be letting some of that go. But I thought it'd be cool to put it in one of these kind of journals so you guys can use it yourself or keep it as a book so I like to take it and kind of clean it off a little bit that keeps it sticky see how we got a nice print there too so we don't throw that away but it literally just releases I mean it, it um, the paint sticks to which is why I like to I'm going to keep that one. So we're going to do another one. Which is why I like to keep on cleaning it off because it just makes the 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 play-doh um, sticky or tacky again, and uh, and that'll go a long way towards making sure that you, you're pulling really good prints. Okay. That's good. So flip it over, do it there. So now I'm going to take my file folder, lay it down. 
and this way you get really good contact if you can put some newsprint or something this is a large sheet of drawing paper but if you just have newsprint or anything wasted or that you want to get paint on and then continue to stain it or print on back on top of it the main thing is just to get really good contact Sorry if my head might be getting in the way. Oh boy, I never know. Okay. Okay, so let's, oops, grab this. Oh yes, what a good print. Look at that. Good stuff. I mean, it looks like, you know, it could have been a screen print or definitely a wood block, right? In this nice repeat pattern. I love it. So with the staining that's already on the file folder and then this print, you know, we already have the basis of a really beautiful um, cover that we're going to keep on working on top of. But let's go ahead and do the inside. So I do, I've been doing the inside with this ARA bronze, dark bronze. So the inside's a little lighter, you know. I mean, you could do the same color inside too if you wanted to, but I decided to make it a little lighter. Um, so that it's just a hint of... Uh, you know, color, but yet just very interesting. And here again, you can collage inside of these. Um, continue to stain and print. You can stamp, you can over stamp the colors. Sky's the limit. Okay, so I can still use this one, it's still good. So. I normally get a good two, two, maybe four prints out of it before I fold it back in on itself. And then uh, you just can fold it right back in on itself. You don't have to worry about cleaning the paint off or anything. And then I uh, will roll, you know, push it back out on my, my form, whatever I'm using. In this case, it's the wood block. And... Um, and then do it again so yeah it holds up nicely and it's so easy to take a print that you know in between to get a fresh um, image it's no problem I think it's the the, the surface of the play-doh against the um, the the gelatin on the gel plate is just perfect for releasing. Okay, and look how pretty that is. I swear you could do something with that. Okay, let's take this and we're going to do the inside now. Lay that down. And so, yeah. And all these prints that, you know, you just have these little bits and pieces. I stain these papers and then they can be used as papers in our journals. You know, I'm trying to do this to get rid of papers and I'm making them. But how do you throw that away? And you know, like you have to stain it and use it. We need, there's so much, there's so much opportunity for needing, um, for needing papers, especially the more journals and books you do you can't you know go wrong alrighty let's see what we got here all right 
Oh yeah, good job. So there we have it. So that's gonna be our inside. Good, right? Outside, inside. Ah, so this is basically dry. So I'm gonna get my area set up for um, turning this into a different style um, file folder journal. I'm gonna do it a little differently. All right, see you in a minute. So we are back to work on this journal. What's interesting is that these are the large file folders. So they are, I think these are the ones that are 14 by nine. And I have this old book that I love, love, love. Um, just got it. it, was sent to uh, one of my um, patrons. She gets these books and then I, I buy them from her. She'll show me what, but anyhow, I like this one because it was already falling apart. And if something's falling apart, I'm more likely to use it. And because I want to take these pages and use it in some of my other work, I was happy for it to be falling apart. But what's cool is, look, it's the exact height of the uh, our file folders. And I love this tall and skinny. I was telling you guys that before when we were working on the Basquiat. So I'm probably not going to leave this one today tall like this, but I may. I might. But anyhow, it's so cool. So I wanted to show you all that. Um, so let's see. This one is would be the 14 by 6. And I think the other Basquiat one we did was 6 as well. So I may make this a little, maybe like 5 and a half. But let's see here. I wanted to show you all that because I thought that was pretty cool. So these are the other ones that I'm going to get to. Um... The reason why I think I might not do six, because I'm, I'm going to do this a little differently, and I want to make a slightly different, deeper pocket. And eight and a half um, by 11. So as long as I have four and a half, that's enough to take an eight and a half, 11, and fold it in half and put it in here. All righty, let's get to cutting. So I'm going to do this at... So one, two, three, four, five and a half. I'm gonna do five and a half. Ah, uh, where's my, oh, I need my longer. I'm always so used to pulling out that metal ruler, but we need something a little longer. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five and a half, okay. I'm just making sure it's all good. Alrighty, so I'm gonna cut this. This time I'm gonna cut it this way with the back part of it. Um intact. And then these sections are gonna be separate. Now, here again, we're gonna be putting stuff in here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to at least Fold one of these to sort of get um, some depth in here because my goal is going to be to fill this this thing up. So, so what that's going to do is going to give us that. So I'll have that much going. And I know I made that decision after I cut it. I could have made that decision and then cut it, but it doesn't matter because these are off. Oh, this print looks so good. I love it. So we can actually play around with this. Like I could actually take this gold and make that be part of the front. We could do it inside or out. And um, to get it, you know, back to the width that we want. And then this could be the back pocket, which I think I'm going to do inside. So you could do these things all different ways, like 
So if I did that inside, then what that's going to do is going to give me an inside pocket, which is going to go this way. Just gives us extra places to tuck stuff. I think I'm going to do it like that. And then this one will go, I could put it over like that. So I could, you know, put it on the outside or I can put it in the inside and do it this way so that the gold is there. So there's a lot of ways to play with this. Okay, I'm just going to put it on the outside. I like it like that. I think that's kind of cool. And then it gives me a place to write, you know, whatever. Okay, so we're going to do it like that. So, I'm going to do the back piece first. Now, this, t what we're going to do this time is we're going to glue, the pocket's going to be this way. So that means we're going to glue here and on the outside um, edge of it. I'm just going to do it in half. Get the middle point, and let's just go ahead and put our little um, thumb hole in there because it'll just make it easier when we want to. Um, see, I could have it that way too. This is on the inside, right? I think this pattern is stronger than that one, so let's have that like that. Okay. So what we're going to do is, hope this is making sense, I'm sure it is, to everyone. Hope my um, thing isn't clogged up. Let me just make sure it's unclogged. Okay, so it's working. So I'm going to take this over. Um, because remember, I've got to have it stopping. It's going to run it down the side. And it's just a cool way to use this and, you know, have another pocket. Okay. So let's flip it. And... Sure, I got it right here. <laughs> so put it down there and here. Just using my baby wipes here. So let me flip this over. Make sure that that's good. And what's nice is that, you know, we can do things to these tabs right on there, what's in it, or, you know, if it's a book, you know, you know what we do. This just gets us started. So here again, we have a place to stick things. We could have made two individual spots. Sometimes if you have a lot of small things that you want to keep, we can make the pocket be, um, you know, uh, two, three, something this long, you could even have three. Okay, so that takes care of that side. So it's gonna it's matching right up with the five and a half. Okay, so now this one I'm gonna make sure lines up as well. So I want to do the gold. I already made that decision. And so for this, I want it to come out. So it's gonna need to come out to meet the back flap, right? So that that is even, and it's going to give me the extra width that I need, that extra um, half an inch that my spine took up, basically took up a half an inch. That half an inch is right here, um, or it's, you know, it's been compensated there. So this is what my pocket will look like. And what's kind of cool about this is that what I'm going to do is I'll make this half and half. That way you can get the idea of the two pocket thing. And by it being on the front, 
you know, I can tuck stuff in there if I wanted to. And so this will give just thought it was thick enough. Let me just do one hole. So I find the middle and then I kind of do it slightly higher. That's just how I like to kind of see. Um, Hmm. See it, but you know. Okay, so here we are here. Okay, so. Gotta remember what I'm doing here. Okay, there we are. <laughs> okay, so that's gonna be there. So in this case, our little tuck places will be on the front of the book, which is cool. So, you know, like you could do this a million ways. You're starting to see what I mean. So this one is like that. And this is going to be like this. Yum. Okay. So what I want to do next is I want to find basically this middle because I'm going to put a glue line here. But let me make sure I get this right. It's got to be out this far to give me the extra that I need. So that means that it'll start like about right here. So that's going to be my middle point. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put it in place. That'll keep things from moving around. Okay. Okay. And then what I'll do is go from here to the edge and then down. We're doing the same thing. It's going to be on the edge like that. Just get it in place there. Some of the extra glue. And then just remind you of like an old world book or something, doesn't it? Especially with this pattern and the way it's been done, kind of like the, the way the printing is, but sort of marbled and little, you know, like. I don't know. I love it. And then uh, and also or like an, an old document journal type or one that could have could hold fabrics or different fauna like feathers or flowers, flora, things like that, right? Okay, that was probably a really easy way doing that, figuring out that middle, that middle and then just getting the rest glued down so it doesn't have this this really long strip that we're dealing with. Now, of course, if you are, if you only have the shorter fold file folders, all of this still applies. Okay, so there we have it nice and made. Let's go ahead and clean this. And there we have the basic journal. What I'm going to do is up here, I noticed that, you know, that corner is here. Um, you can see how the original kind of curved like that. So I'm going to get my, um, my scissors and I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to follow that inside edge just to make it uniform. Okay, so that's that. So those corners work. And let me see, the other thing that I like to do with these, because I'm going to be putting stuff in them and filling them up, is I like to use Tim Holtz's tiny stapler. I love this thing. And it makes the littlest little staplers. Sta Oops. I need to put some staplers in it. I shall be right back. All right, we're back with the staples in the tiny stapler. So that PVA holds really nicely, but... Because this is going to be utilitarian, even if it weren't, I like putting these in my these staplers in my books. Um, 
I just like the way they look and they're so small. You can hardly see them. And even from the back, they close down really nicely. So you really don't see them. So I like to just, you know, put these on here. And that'll just kind of close that down. And then in this middle section, I'm going to go in here and just put ones inside the pocket there. And these can be covered up. You can decide you want to collage over them. Um, you know, put tape, uh, washi tape, or whatever. It just is a great way to secure this and just make it functional and at the same time I think it looks pretty cool okay here we have it so now we have our structure and I'm going to show you how we're going to put some things in here and then we'll work um, we're actually going to do more work on this. So I'm just going to kind of show you the stuff that I'm going to be pulling together and then I'm going to let you guys get your stuff together. And next week, let's spend some time on showing you how I'm going to fill the guts of this thing up. So I have a lot of old book pages and I mean, I have books that just look like this because I take the covers off to use the covers and a lot of times it's good stuff but I forget about it. So I like to kind of create collections where I'm putting, you know, like things together. So for instance, this pocket right here, I don't know, this may be a little too wide to put in here, but things that are narrow would fit in, um, would fit in here. So I just have collages. I mean, I have letters, like envelopes that could go in these pockets. Um, a lot of times I keep, I keep these bags. I got these in Mexico. They're just so cool, but now they're here. So I don't know that I have them, but to be able to stick them in, you know, your pockets to work with them. So, you know, you have them is really good stuff. I have these collages. So I have that kind of stuff, envelopes, things like that. But then also look at like a lot of times, you know, we have these, these sort of extra papers just laying around like I did some gel printing on this I may just I'm thinking I'm gonna put that inside of there um, I have papers in here all different sizes and what have you but I'm going to end up um, putting a lot of this stuff in here as a holding place for my um, for coming back and doing collaging but can you imagine just having like just a bunch of these on your desk <laughs> and you know when you want some inspiration you just open it up and you start flipping through it and you find stuff like this would go in there um you'd find stuff and use it like for instance for the aesthetics of it i would just go ahead and take this and rip this off so that you know it's ready for me to use Because when stuff is in piles, I forget. I don't know if you are like me, but I have to see stuff and be able to touch it. I will forget I have stuff like this. So see, that could be put in here um, into this binding. We have this. That's yummy. That can be put in here. So you're going to see how we're going to put this stuff together. But start gathering up your things. Oh, I had this fabric. I always have some great fabric, but like... How cool would it be just to be able to take this fabric and a nice piece of it and you know like it's it's working with everything with all the aesthetics and everything of it and just you know um you know put it inside of this journal of with everything so when i'm ready for it and all these pieces are coming together um 
I have stuff all in one place. So I know this may not be making a lot of sense right now, but just gather up all your papers, all your bits and pieces. Like I have a whole stack of just gel prints and stained papers and stuff. Just pull all your stuff together. And next week, we're going to assemble this stuff in a book, in this, in this folio, um, according to my plans. <laughs> Fabric everything. Don't, don't hold back. Let's see how this stuff goes so nicely in, in this side pocket. See why I wanted to staple it because I fill my stuff up. So I like to know that, um, that I have places for things. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to keep on working on these and, uh, put close up so you can see it. So until next week, hope you enjoyed this printing session, making this long folio style. I mean, look at this. It looks so good. I mean, it, you know, this is vintage. This isn't, but I mean, I think that's looking pretty good. And then even like the papers inside of here. Um, let me see. Um, even if you wanted to make your books and just using old ledger papers and old book papers and actually turn this into a... Um, a document journal or something like that look how beautiful that is in there it just fits right in there so nicely and you could actually fill this up with um, with document pages and journal pages and stuff like that and just make this really cool book so I hope that was an, um, some inspiration for you all and you know you're off to print up and stain lots of file folders so that maybe you could use this as a way to organize your studio in December, you know, um, pull a lot of your ephemera and stuff together and um, make these document journals that are going to hold our stuff as well as can be an art journal, book is art, any of that stuff. So take care. Love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me over in Premiere. As always, I enjoy it. And until next week, grab all your stuff. I'm going to continue to be printing and, um, and doing different uh, techniques on my file folders so I can have a nice stack of them to go through all of my stuff and organize. All right. Take care. Love you guys. Make sure to um, thumb up the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel. And uh, that way you can get notifications and come back and hang out with us. Take care. Bye-bye.